Well, let's look over at John 11 this morning. As I said earlier, this was one of the Bible stories this week, and uh, the kids were sharing this with us as we asked them to give us a rundown each night of what they studied. One of them was Lazarus, and I don't know, I was just thinking about the loss that we experienced this week. I was thinking about the loss that we, several of us have experienced this year, and uh, some of the rough times we've been going through, and I thought we needed something encouraging. Uh, I thought, and then I looked at the bulletin for today, and he says, I'm making all things new. And I said, okay, God, I hear you. We're coming, we're coming. And uh, I really didn't know what direction he wanted me to go. And then all of a sudden, I was over there copying the bulletins and things, and Lazarus just come into my mind. And I said, that's where we need to go, because it's kind of got all of it wrapped up in, in one big story here. I'm not going to tell you we're going to get to the end of this today. We're just going to let the Lord lead. So uh, we want to make sure we glean from this, because, man, there's a lot of great things as we walk down through the Scripture in John 11. So, God's timing. Do you trust God's timing? That's the question this morning. And I think we trust God's timing as long as it's with our timing, okay? Waiting is not our strong suit. Uh, and sometimes, guys, when things happen like they did this week, it's hard to understand why now, why this time, uh, things of that nature. But guys, as I, I said earlier, when the song says and the scripture says, uh, his timing is always perfect. And that's, that's you know, we, we know that. And if I ask you right now to raise your hand, if you trust God, every hand would go up in here. But, guys, when those hard days come, it is very difficult. It is very difficult to have that joy in your heart because he's there. He hasn't left. The Spirit hasn't left. He'd come to dwell with you when you received him as Savior. And he wants to let you know that, hey, I'm, I'm working. I'm working here and I'm, I know things don't make sense right now, uh, but they will. And, and there's, there's a purpose behind everything I do, uh, Jesus would tell you. We think of Romans 8, 28, for working all things together for the good of, him that, of them that love the Lord. And That's a lot of working. You think about not only working the lives, if he was just working in the lives of this church, that's a pretty big deal. But when he's working in all the lives of all people at all times, that's quite a coordination to be done there, and only God can do something like that. So, do you trust God's timing? I want you to ask yourself that as we read this morning. Uh, John 11, verse 1, the death of Lazarus. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha. Now, just kind of in, kind of your, getting your map out or your GPS this morning, Bethany was about two miles from, uh, from Jerusalem, wasn't that far. And so Jesus was over uh, east of the Jordan River some, and so he was a little bit of ways away, about a day's walk. And uh, also that he had been doing some wonderful things in and around Jerusalem, healing a blind man and things like that that will be referenced here later as we read. And so they were pretty upset. The, the, the Jewish religious people were really upset at God, thought, uh, upset at Jesus, and thought he was kind of overstepping his boundaries. And why healing a, a guy that's blind would overstep your boundaries is beyond me, but they didn't like that too much because it took, the, it took all the people's attention off them and it put it right where it needed to be on the Son of God. And sometimes we're kind of like that, aren't we? We like the attention on us. But listen, guys, where the attention needs to be is on Jesus Christ. And as we go out and share and tell and, and go and we do Bible school and, and we do camp and we do... Whatever we do, Christmas tree, whatever this church does, guys, it's very important that we shine Jesus and not ourselves. Because they can talk about Kaiser First Baptist all they want, but it, not one of those things talking about our church will send them to heaven, will let them go to heaven. Only the blood of Jesus Christ will allow them to go to heaven. And so we want to be lifting up Christ in everything we possibly do. So just some little background there. The village of Mary and his sister, her sister Martha this Mary, who, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. You remember that story, how she gave her that expensive perfume, and oh, Judas was upset about that. He said, man, why are you spending money that way? And it kind of bothered him, but she did that for the Lord, and the Lord said she will be remembered always. And here we are, thousands of years later, we're still talking about what Mary did for Jesus, and so it's still being mentioned today in our, our world. Verse 3, so the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Isn't that something, the way they phrase that? The one you love is sick. 
Now, they didn't say much more than that. They just said, the one you love. And, and I guess, I don't know, maybe they were trying to appeal to Jesus' emotions. Maybe they still didn't quite understand this was the Son of God. Maybe, you know, they looked at him as a rabbi, as a teacher, we would say today. And, and they knew he was an incredible man. But I think they're still trying to get a grip, just like along with everybody else at that time. And, and still in 2018, there's a lot of people trying to get a, a grip on who Jesus really is. Amen? And so they're trying to figure all this out. So they sent word, Lord, the one you love is sick. And let me tell you this, and we told the kids this all week, he loves you. Jesus loves you. I don't care what you're going through right now. I don't, I don't care how hard life is right now. I don't know, I don't care how many burdens or how, plate, how full your plate is right now. Jesus loves you. Please, if you don't hear another word I say this morning, please hear that, that Jesus loves you. And he wants the very best for you. He wants to give you a life that is abundant and full. And uh, please, please hear that today. There's a lot of people who don't think they're loved today. There's a lot of kids who don't think they're loved. And we try to tell them that over and over this week, that they are loved by Jesus Christ. Verse 4, when he heard this, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. Man, I love that statement right there. This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now, I think, going back to our initial question, do you doubt, or are you okay, do you, do you trust God's timing? I think if we could think of this verse right now, that everything that God is doing is to bring glory to Jesus, to bring glory to himself, so that others may know him, so that others may have an opportunity to come to know him as Savior, so others can have everlasting life. And not only in heaven, but have life now, have abundant life now. And so Jesus is making a big statement here, and I love that it's in the red letters. So if you have a red letter Bible, you know this is from the words of Jesus. And any time I read the red letters, it's, it's important. It's, it, it fills my heart to know that I am saying what Jesus said. And that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal as we look at that this morning. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. You know, we were getting closer and closer to the cross. Matter of fact, this was going to be the last great miracle done before the cross and that was recorded anyway jesus could have done other things not every miracle that jesus did was in the bible but this was the last recorded great miracle him raising lazarus from the dead and so the cross is getting closer and it's very important that that people begin to see jesus for who he is you remember in his ministry he spent a lot of time saying no my time hasn't come yet you know the, the day of the wedding at, at canaan with his mom and she wanted him to to turn the water into wine and things of that nature. He was very reluctant to do that. He said, it's not my time yet. But here now, he's, he's starting to see, and God's starting to let him know because they work in perfect harmony. They work in perfect coordination. And God's letting him know the time is getting close. And it's time now to start letting people know who you are. Now, you've shown them through lots of great things. You've shown them through miracles and your love and your care. But now it's time that they start seeing you for who you are, the Messiah, the Savior, the one that saves. Think about that, the Messiah, because it won't be long that he'll be going to the old rugged cross. Now Jesus loved Mary, uh, loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. What? What, what do you do when you get a call that you have a family member that's sick? If at all possible, we run to them. We get in the car. We make calls. We, we're on our way. I'll be there as quick as I can get there. Why in the world did Jesus wait two more days? I can't tell you. You know, it's his timing. What did we say at the beginning? Do you trust God's timing? Why would God not go right away? We got a day's walk. We got a day, you know, we're not jumping in the, in the Dodge pickup and taking off and getting there in 30 minutes. He's got to walk a whole day back to Bethany. And he's going to wait two days before he leaves. So we're waiting three days. And then, you know, getting back over there, it's just it's going to be, end up being four days before he even gets there. Now, I think we can kind of find an answer if we go back to the red letters we just read. This is sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Do you know that there is nowhere in the Bible that whenever anybody was in the presence of Jesus that they died? Think about that. There is nowhere in the Bible when Jesus was present that anybody died. Because why? He is the resurrection and life. 
And when you come into his presence, you can't die. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? So where, where is the bigger impact for the glory of God going to come from? Would it be him showing up and Lazarus gets well? Or would it be him showing up four days later and rising Lazarus from the dead? Look where we're going here, guys. Look where we're headed. We want people to know that this is God's son. And him just getting well, that could be, that could be attributed to, well, okay, he got over that. It was just a 24-hour bug. Everything's fine. But he needed something to show them before he went to the cross. That guys, look, look, you can put your faith in me. You can put your trust in me. And I am God's son. I am who I say I am. Remember what he said, if you've seen, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. That's a big statement. That threw a lot of people off. A lot of people got mad about that statement. But I like it. Because we know what Jesus did. That was, that was God in living, living color. We know he had the heart of God. We know, how do we want to be like God? Be like Jesus. Be like Jesus. He was the example. What was the example of? Of who God was. And what God's heart is about. So it's very important as we, we see that. Look at that. Look at what is going to happen. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to the disciples, now let us go back to Judea. His time, every time, but always perfect time. And guys, we have a hard time with that when life doesn't go the way we think it should go. You know, when it's happening to someone else, we're real easy to say, well, God has a purpose, and God's time is perfect, and you just trust him. But when it comes knocking on our door, sometimes we have a little bit different attitude, don't we? God, why are you doing this to me? God, why didn't you show up? God, why? Why did you let my loved one pass? Why did you let my loved one get cancer? Why are you letting my child be sick? And guys, it takes on a whole other realm as we look at those kind of questions. I'm telling you, it's real easy to sit back and say, you've got to just trust God. You just got to be faithful. God's going to be there for you. He's got a purpose. He's working all things together to the good that love the Lord. But why is it when it comes knocking on our door, we're not as quick to be that trusting? Guys, we have to trust him in the storms of our life. We have to trust him when it's right on our front porch. And that's not always easy. That's not always easy. Mm. This life is hard, amen? This life is hard. But let me, let me add this. What if we were doing this without Jesus? Think of people that you know this morning, guys, that do, that, that do not know Jesus. That do not have Jesus as their Savior. Guys, this, this life will, will just cut you to the, to the quick. And we're doing this with the help of Jesus. But guys, we must trust. We must obey. We must follow. We must pick up our cross daily and follow him. Because there's a lot of things we don't understand. But I know, uh, and I think Dan even prayed it this morning, Lord, when we can't see your hands working, may we trust your heart. And sometimes I don't understand where God's working. I don't know why he's working it this way. But I know this. I know I can trust him, and I know that he is faithful, and I know that he will bring forth things a million times better than we ever thought. And I think Mary and Martha is going to see that. They wanted him to just come and heal their brother. But think about the excitement going from my loved one's dead, my brother's dead, to here he is standing before me talking to me. God has much more than we can ever imagine in store for us. Well, those are tough questions, guys. They're the ones that eat at us. Even if we know God, even we read our Bible every day, even we pray every day, we go to church every time the door's open. If we'll all be honest with ourselves, these questions eat at us from time to time. And they hurt. And it bothers us. But please, please, I say to myself, I say to you, trust our Lord. Trust him. Trust his timing. Verse 8, but rabbi, that's teacher, okay? But rabbi, teacher, they said a short while ago, the Jews there tried to stone you, and yet you are going back. See, they're still, this is the 12, they're still trying to understand why in the world, I think they're still trying to understand why we're following this fella. I think they understand some of it, and they've seen him, and they've made some, some professions here and there, but 
But still, they're still trying to cope with all of it. And they know that they want him dead in Jerusalem. They want him dead. They don't want him in that area. And they, they just know, Lord, we, I know that's your friend, and, and I know he's sick, but Lord, don't you think it'd be better if we stay over here? Kind of like us out telling people about Jesus. Amen. Lord, I know they're going to hell. I know they have no hope of eternity with, that, with you unless someone goes and tells them. But Lord, you know what? I think it'd be better I'd stay over here and let someone else do it. That's a challenge this morning. That's a challenge. Well, that's what the preacher does, right? That's, that's what we pay you. Well, yeah, that's, that's what I should be doing too. But guys, listen, when all of us go and when all of us share, look how many more apostles, look how many more disciples we have, look how many more followers of God we have when we all share. We all share daily as we go. So they're not, they're not too hip on going, even though they know Jesus loves Lazarus, but hey, they're thinking about their safety. They're thinking about themselves more than others. And I think when we get all bent out of shape at God, usually we're thinking about ourselves more than we're thinking about others. Because remember, he's working in your life and their life and his life and her life and their life. And so we have to let him work. Because it's not only affecting us, it's affecting many, many people at one time. Jesus answered, here's the red letters again. Are, you, are, you not, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world's light. It's when a person walks at night that they stumble. For they have no light. What is he talking about there? I think one thing we could think about that is maybe you could take those 12 hours and say they're our life. We have so, only so much time. We only have so much time to do the things that God has asked us to do. We only have so much time to make sure that we keep our eyes on Christ. Because, listen, we can waste a lot of time if we'll be honest. I waste a lot of time in my easy chair. Can anybody agree to that or just rather not? Okay. All right. We can waste time in that easy chair. We can waste time before the TV or, or you know, whatever we do. And not, that doesn't mean it's bad in itself, but we can waste some time. The Lord's only given us so long to live on this earth. And we don't know when that hour may come. Once again, we experience it this week right here in our church. Bless his heart, last Sunday I was watching a video from last week and we asked the fathers to stand and, and Buddy stood right up there where Annette's at. This week, he's with the father. Stephen, it hurts, but it's also happy to know he's there, isn't it? We have a promise, don't we? Guys, we only have so much time. Jesus said, I've only got so much time. He knew where his ending was coming. He knew that he had come to die for you and me. And guys, we only have so much time to to love and to, to care for people and to put away jealousy and, and pettiness and bitterness. and We only have so much time to, to do the things God's asked us to do. And we see, the thing is, we don't know when that clock will run out. We don't know. And Jesus said, guys, I've got things to do. I've got to go. This is the time when I'm supposed to go. And the Father has, has let me know this is the time. And we cannot hold back here. I've held back a couple days because that was God's plan for me to be glorified and for what we're going to do for the people to be glorified, but now we've got to go. And I'm not really worried whether I'm going to die or not because I know I'm going to die anyway. And you know what, guys? Until it's your time to die, when you're living in God's will, you're not going to die one minute sooner or one minute later because he knows your days. He knows when you're going to come and when you're going to go. He knows when you were born. And it, it, we read yesterday at the funeral at Psalms, and David said, number my days, Lord. I know that you're numbering my days. You know. You know when it's going to be over. And so, listen, I remember reading David Platt's book a few years back. Um, what was his first book? Radical. And, and he, that was a, one of the things. He talked about going to the world, and he has a big heart for missions. But he said, unless a missionary, unless a person can get around and get away from the fear of dying, they're never going to be a practical working vital part of missions because there's so many people worrying that they might get hurt you know when we went to china you know they were they were tearing down church buildings and there was things going on but you know what and not because i'm a great christian because i feel like i stumble every day 
But I, I never felt a bit of fear while I was over there. I just felt like I was where God wanted me to be, and he had it from there. And it's the same way with many, in that we weren't even in the most dangerous places, guys. There's people going in the places undercover. They're going in as teachers and things that if they're found out they're a, mission, a missionary, they could be killed on spot. They could be thrown in jail for their life. We've seen it happen on the news where we've had to bargain and, and, and negotiate to bring people back home that were telling people about Jesus. But it says once you get past being afraid to die, then you can go out and do things for Jesus. And guys, we are so afraid of death. I, I don't like death. I think about it a lot. And it seems like as you get older, you think about it. As you go to more funerals, as you get older, you think about it a lot. It's in your, it's in your thoughts almost on a daily basis. I don't like to think about that. I don't like to think about leaving my wife and leaving my children. But guys, we have to get around that. We have to put that in God's hands and say, God, I'm going to go. And, and I know whenever it's my time, you'll take care of me. But until then, let me put that all in your hands and let me just go and tell people about you. And that's what he's saying here. You only have so long to live, guys. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to step out for Jesus. Don't be afraid to tell your, your neighbor about the love of the Lord. Don't be afraid to speak up to your family and say, look, guys, I know you know me. I know you know me when I was this high and you know everything wrong I've ever done. But I'm telling you, God has changed my life and I want you to experience the same thing. I want you to experience the same thing. What power in God's words. Guys, we cannot walk away from the light. I love the way he says that in, in the end in verse 10. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. Try doing this life without God. I've done that a few times in my life, or I thought I was. I knew he was there, but, you know, back in those 20 to 30 years, those college years, I'd like to have that 10 years over. But I, I tried those days of not being where God wanted me to be, and it stinks. It's no fun. And if you're not careful, just like the prodigal son, you'll find yourself eating with the hogs. And it won't be good. It won't be good. He said, look, walk in the light. Get over here close to me. Come on, Jesus says, let's go. Don't try to do this on your own. Because you'll fail. You're going to get hurt. You're going to stumble and fall. Listen, this life beats us up enough without putting ourselves through some more torment, without living for Christ. Man, you could, you could preach an hour just on those verses right there. There's a lot there. Let's move on. After Verse 11, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. Now, there's some things that we need to talk about right here. Every time that sleep or death is referenced in the Bible, they call it sleep, okay? And we're not getting into, this is not soul sleep, okay? When a person dies, the Bible tells us to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. So the minute we take our last breath, our soul leaves our body. Now, we've got this old earthly tent left behind, and we put that in the grave. And the Bible says someday... That our soul will come back with the Lord and those that are dead in Christ will rise and we will meet our new body in a moment, twink of an eye, we'll have a new glorified body fit for heaven. But he's not talking about Lazarus being dead and soul sleeping. He's just using that as a term that Lazarus has died. His, his omniscience, his, his all-knowing. He, he's not, you know, this is not the day where you picked up the cell phone and somebody called you and said, somebody walked a day to him to tell him the news that he was sick, Jesus already knows that Lazarus has passed before he even got there. His divine power, wow, has given us everything we need. We've talked about that all week. It's up here on the wall somewhere. There it is, right over there. There it is, back there. Man, I, I kept going over the first three words, his divine power. Anytime you need help in this life, remember his di divine power. Because it's got all you need. And he was knowing, he knew Think about someone that knows everything that's happening. You don't hide nothing from God, amen? We don't hide nothing from God. You think, I got away with that. God didn't see that. He's seen it. There may be consequences. The best thing to do is get on our knees and repent and say, God, would you forgive me? And he'll clean you white as snow once again. Bless his heart. He has to clean us up a lot, don't he? Mm. 
Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. <laughs> what power. I'm going there to wake him up. What surety. That's our Lord. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. I want you to know today, Jesus is going to take care of you. Whenever it, wherever it is, whatever it happens, when, whenever your time comes, he will take care of you. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get better. This is how deep we are spiritually, okay? We all have to just, yep, yeah, we're about that deep spiritually. Oh, Lord, so he's taking some NyQuil and he's asleep. Okay, he'll be all right. They didn't even get what Jesus was saying. Fellas, he's dead. But I'm going to wake him up. I got the power to bring him out of the grave. One of these days, let me read you this here. Let me read you this. Look over in 1 Thessalonians 5. Go to your right, about six books or so. All the T's are together. My old hometown preacher told me that many years ago. All the T's are together. 1 Corinthians 5, I mean 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians 5, it's not on screen, Russell. 1 Thessalonians 5, or 4, I'll get there in a minute, 4, 15. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15. Can't talk right. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15. Listen, this is what's going to happen. This is, this is why I can stand before a family and tell them, look, you will see your loved one again if you know Christ. He is going to take care of them. We need that assurance today. According to the Lord, Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep, those who have died, okay? Those whose body is still in the grave. Their soul has gone on to be with the Lord, but their body is in the grave. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command. And the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Man, oh man, what a day. What a day. Wouldn't you love to see mom and dad again? Wouldn't you love to see your brother or sister, or your son or daughter? You keep trusting God. You're going to see it. The dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive, I told Dana this week, I hope, I, she said, you know, who are you going to get to preach your funeral someday? I said, don't want to think about it? We'll move on. I said, We're, I'm still praying that we'll all get raptured together. We can all go as a family, you know? That's what I'm praying for. But he says this, those who are still alive are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Are you encouraged this morning? Listen, all this life has got to offer is death. Without Christ, all this, that's all that's going to happen. You can do all you want between, as they say, between the lines, all right? We've got our birth date on a stone, and we've got our death on a stone, and that dash in between is your life. You can do all you want in between that dash, but I'm telling you, you're still going to die. What you do for Jesus is going to count during that time. Everything else is good. Everything else is well. We want to provide for a family. We want to have a good time. We want to smile. We want to laugh. All that's good. But I'm telling you, the decision you make for Jesus is going to determine how happy you are when this verse happens. You're going to be brokenhearted if not. Because see, the ones that are dead without Christ, they don't even raise at this time. They're not even coming to life at this time. They're going to come to life. Go back over in Revelation toward the end, 2021, I think it's 21. And when they go before the great white throne, he said, all those that have died without Christ, he raises them then. And they stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And he says, and those whose name was not written in the Lamb's Book of Life were cast into the lake of fire. That's not playing right there. See, we like to play with church, and we like to play with Jesus, and we like to play with the Bible, and we like to play life. But I'm telling you, that's not playing right there. That's not playing. And guys, I don't want you to miss this. I don't want you to miss heaven. I don't want you to miss eternal life with the Lord and, and with your family that has believed in Christ. Don't blow this off, as they say today. Don't, don't shun this. Don't push it away. Let it come to you. Listen to what Christ is saying. He wants to wake you up. And let you know that he loves you. And he's gonna, that he's died for you on the cross. And that he wants to forgive your sins so that someday you can be raised together with all those you love 
and you can meet the Lord in the air and so be with him forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We'll get to the good news next week, all right? So you've got to come back now, see the rest of it, all right? But I, I knew we wouldn't get far. There's a lot there. Guys, I, I want you to understand, we serve a God with mighty, mighty power. We serve a God that loves you. And we serve a God that wants to wake you up and help you realize that he died for you and rose again so you can have eternal life. And all you have to do is trust him. Do you trust his timing when things don't make sense? Do you trust the Lord when things are really hard? Do you trust the Lord when it happens to you? I think that's the biggest question. We trust him a lot when it's out there. But when it comes to us, do we trust his timing? It's hard. I'm not standing before you today saying, I got this all together and I get it right every time because I don't. But he gets it right every time. And he's, he's teaching me. He's growing my faith. He'll grow your faith too. He's going to grow the faith of Mary and Martha next week. He's going to grow their faith and he's going to walk them right through it. And guys, may we realize that life is hard, yes. But we serve a God that's got it in the palm of his hand. And that's power. And that's the God we serve. You don't leave here today discouraged. You leave here knowing that I serve a God that has all the power that I need and will ever need. And he has everything in his hands. And his clock is always on time. And all God's people said, amen. Let's pray. Dear Father, we just love you. I thank you for your, your strength and your power. I thank you, Lord, when I'm weak and you are strong. I thank you for your spirit being here today. Lord, I know there's many people hurting across this congregation this morning. Lord, it's hard. This life is hard. But Lord, may we never lose sight of you. May we keep our eye on the prize. And that's you, Jesus. You've proven yourself over and over again, as Sarah sung today. And Lord, thank you from where you brought us to where we are now. But Lord, you're not done. You've got even, even, even greater things ahead. I ask you to speak to hearts this morning, Lord. I ask us even in the middle of summer, when a lot of times our, our mind is way away from you and we're thinking about vacations and going places and all the relaxation, Lord, all that's okay. But Lord, I pray that even in the middle of this, this summer Sunday, that we can be revived. That we can give you the glory. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. And Lord, that doesn't mean that we've been in the dirt for a long time or we've been in a hole or a rut for a long time. We can get in a rut in one week. And so Lord, revive us today. Let us be excited about you this summer. And wherever we go, wherever our, our feet take us, may we take your glory and your power with us. In your precious name we pray, amen. Just for a moment with your head bowed, we want to give you an opportunity to come and pray if you'd like. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We pray that God spoke to you through the message. If you'd like to keep up with what's going on at FBC Kaiser, you can find us online at fbckaiser.com or download our app. We hope to see you soon and may God bless you.